Shad Adversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I'm a passionate writer. And recently I've shared what my thoughts are in regards to the, a broader overview on what you need to do to write a book, specifically uh, genre fiction or commercial literature novel. Please do go watch that video if you'd like to hear my thoughts in regards to that. Now, there's so much involved in uh, learning how to write a good book. And uh, as I mentioned in my other video, I've been trying to, you know, figure this out for the last 10 years. And I've learned a thing or two. One of the primary things is being able to review work. Not only your own work, but any work. You're getting it to the point where you're so familiar with the craft of writing. That's including all the things that makes up a good story and all the things that make prose, the sentence level stuff readable and enjoyable. So to that end, I invited my viewers to submit their writing samples to me, anything that they're working on, for me to review for them. Doing exactly that, going through sentence by sentence and uh, picking out anything that isn't following one of these techniques because again, they stand out to you when you notice them and uh, it'll, it'll take too long for me to try and write a list and I'll probably forget some along the way because like I said, you generally notice it when you see it. But I feel it's unfair to review someone else's work than uh, showing that I am just as critical and harsh on my own work. And so this video specifically is a review of one of my most early pieces of writing. I have not opened this thing in years. I mean, like years, eight years to be specifically, if I go according to the last time this document was saved. So this is an eight year old piece of writing and I've been trying to write for 10 years. I mostly lost the first two years of stuff, but I wasn't doing it heaps in the first two years as well. I started far more actively after the first two years. And so this is when I really started to put pen to paper, uh, as the saying goes, but it's probably more appropriate to say uh, fingers to keyboard. Let's rip it to shreds. So if a literary agent or an editor or publisher was to see uh, this piece of writing, it would be rejected without them reading a single word. Why? It's not formatted correctly. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Even something as uh, insignificant supposedly as formatting will get things rejected. But no, I mean, if you don't even know how to format your writing correctly, you won't have a hope of get getting published or going anywhere. So what's wrong with this? Well, uh, proper formatting is double space lined lines with indented paragraphs, usually in Times New Roman, at a font size of 12. Here is an example of proper formatting. Now you'll notice I've uh, blanked out my personal information, but you'll start with your name, your address, International contact number, I mean, it's not as important if you live in the US because most of the big publishers are in the US, but if you're trying to submit to one of the, say, our, uh, uh, you know, England publishing houses or uh, UK publishing houses, international, email, website, you all know my website, you're actually on the website right now. Okay, so center of the page, title of the book, uh, you know, so then also novel by, and an approximate of the words, it's blanked out because <laughs> it hasn't even started. But then when we go down to the actual writing, this is a format, okay? So don't put the margins right out to the edge here. You need to keep it in about here. Uh, each par uh, So the beginning of each paragraph indented, so it's a tab indent and double spaced lines. So what that means is, so you won't see that the, the, uh, the uh, you know, little indicator will go right down, but there's room for a whole line in between each line of text. And just so you know, this isn't one of my older pieces of writing, what you're looking at. This is actually one of my more recent pieces of writing, and it's just an experimental piece, not heavily reviewed, so you probably will find a thing or two wrong with it. Uh, but it was written just for a bit of fun. Going back to one of my earliest pieces of writing. Okay, now, I it would take us hours and hours to go through every single uh, thing that we see here. So what I'll generally do is, uh, read as far as it would take for the piece of writing to be rejected. What's interesting already on this first piece of writing, it, it's already rejected, but we will continue because it'll be instructive. But when I look at some of your other works that you guys have submitted to me, I'll probably be reviewing as far as it would last. So if it lasts the full page, that's good. If it lasts a full five pages without anything critically bad, even better. That's a uh, like a professional standard piece of writing, but it doesn't mean it's phenomenal. It means it's just kind of past the bar. But with many other pieces of writing, sometimes you don't even need to go past the first paragraph before it would be rejected because 
it's funny, like a piece of music, you only need to listen to a tone or two or someone playing on a piano for a couple of seconds even before you can tell if this person can play piano or not. It's very much the same with writing. You can, just a few sentences can tell you very clearly if this writer is actually any good. And if you can tell that they are making some amateurish mistakes, why on earth would you bother reading the whole thing? Especially for an agent or publisher who gets so much stuff sent to him. Time is precious and they don't have a lot of it. So they go scorched earth and as soon as a red, big red flag comes up, bang, thrown onto the next. So back to the piece of writing. Uh, now, this was like uh, one of the, I think this comes from the second attempt of a book. Though I might have actually finished this book. Uh, or gotten two-thirds of the way through. So this is one of the real early ones. A rustle of busyness has erupted within the Moraine estate this morning. Ugh. All right. <laughs> Not a good sentence. There's a couple of... Uh... First of all, that's really going to throw uh, anyone reading this. You'll notice it's written in present tense. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just jarring for anyone who hasn't done much of it. This next part is something that I forgot to mention while I was actually filming. So I'll just add it here in commentary, and it's this. Whenever you relate a story to someone else, you're always speaking in past tense because you're referring to the past, and that's what makes it natural for people to hear and for you to speak. And because of that, when you try and write in present tense, you will often mistakenly write a word in a past tense structure without realizing it and this is exactly what I've done here in the first line of this manuscript. Everything else as you keep reading is in present tense but the word that I missed here is erupted. Because this is written in present tense this should be erupts. Uh, the rustle of busyness erupts within the Moraine estate this morning. And don't get me wrong, the sentence is horrible anyway. Rustle of busyness, ugh, right? But this is just to point out one of the dangers of writing in present tense because oftentimes, and I've seen this in others, is that you will mistakenly throw in a word that's written in the past tense when it should be present. So it's much safer to just do past tense overall because it's far less likely that you would mistakenly write a word in present tense, it can happen, but far less likely than the reverse, writing in present tense and accidentally writing something in past tense much more likely. The reason why I picked present tense, because it was an, a conscious decision I wrote in that, is that I wanted the writing to feel immediate, like it's happening now. The mistake I made there is that I thought I couldn't get the same effect out of past tense. You can. You can make past tense feel absolutely immediate. The only thing that's changing is that you say he did instead of does. Because the reader is reading it right then, it will feel immediate, especially if you've got, you know, the pacing right and things like that. But this is my own opinion. Other published authors have said, and I've read him, them say directly, that it doesn't matter. Past or present tense, uh, they do say present tense will be a bit jarring, but once the reader gets into the flow, it's, they won't notice at all. It'll just be the story and book and whatever. But for me, because, like I said, it's very jarring. It's like, okay, a rustle of business has erupted within the Moraine estate this morning. It's too wordy. And it's also too expository, if uh, I'm using that word correctly, meaning uh, it's uh, explaining, okay? It's telling rather than showing. So, uh, gee, uh, uh, as I go forward, basically this is all exposition with telling over showing, which is horrendous level writing, okay? So, <laughs> and you see how, like, I am saying this is horrendous, and it's something I wrote, and I thought it was pretty good when I wrote it, but it is trash, okay? Uh, because the more you go through it, this is all exposition. I'll go back to sentence by sentence, but I just want to show you how expository this is, where it's just telling, it's a it's, uh, boring narration. A rustle of busyness has erupted within the Moraine estate this morning. The servants are preparing all the needed things for their master's departure. A few hours pass in this preparation, but contrary to perceived possibility, they become ready to leave. <laughs> Lord Eutherius Moraine, Senton's father, with a detachment of his own troops, are all gathered in an impressive company. Senton travels alongside his father at the head, uh, as is appropriate. But that was just to show you how wordy and narrative this was. Well, it is, but it's what, how I used to write. The problem with, uh, this is a current state of writing, it wasn't the case uh, if you go back a few years, is that uh, the first uh, 
paragraph and pages really need to grab people. I don't necessarily ascribe to that. I, I think it's perfectly fine to start a book in a more reflective way, as long as it's still well written and interesting. Uh, and if there's enough to still grab the reader's interest, proposing a, 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 an action the character is intending to do or a difficult situation the character is currently in, that can be fine. The thing that you don't want to do, which is how books used to start off, is an info dump where it's the world of Ellen Desharia uh, was in war for 500 years between the kingdoms of this kingdom and that kingdom, place name, kingdom name, hero name, battle here. The legacy of the gods with magic establishing this and this town was like this, which gave the background for this particular character who is actually the grandfather of the character we're eventually going to... Info dump, okay? Don't do that. You can find hundreds of books that started this way. Uh, Lord of the Rings is very expository in this way, but this is not uh, like uh, how writing is done uh, like currently. Now, the reason, in my opinion, is because writing has actually gotten better over the years. Info dumps are just not good. In fact, there's a uh, like uh, in terms of uh, writing standards, um, uh, there's far better ways that people have figured out how to uh, convey world setting to the reader, and that's dispersing it in little parts bit by bit through character interaction and descriptions, but not going too heavy. Uh, but sometimes if you find an area where you can, you know, do a decent little paragraph, but then get right back into things, it's fine. But it's a, a, it's a far more delicate balance than information. Even Pride and Prejudice, one of the classics, starts with a pretty big info dump. It is a truth universally acknowledged, uh, something that a man needs to get married, right? And then it goes into the background history. Info dumps used to be the stock standard. It isn't how it's done anymore. And if you start a book with an info dump, it'll get rejected instantly. So going back to the, the scene, as I was saying, the ways to improve it. Okay, so from the viewpoint of uh, a servant, that, that's one way to do it, and that's trying to stick with the uh, how the scene is uh, established here, because with what I've written here, it's from the perspective of the servants, and only uh, after the first paragraph do we get to some of the more significant characters. Uh, better than doing it this way, okay, because again, there are ways to improve. Instead of doing it from the viewpoint of uh, a servant, do it from the viewpoint of one of the primary characters. The main character in this, his name was Senton. Uh, gee, I improved that name, by the way. But there was a reason why I'd pick Senton once upon a time. But I would have written it from Senton's perspective and what he's going through and how frantic he feels in getting ready for this large journey that they're about to leave on. So fundamentally, uh, this piece of writing is broken from the very beginning. The scene isn't introduced uh, in the best way, and then the way it is written is also very poorly. Let's go to right down to the sentence itself. Now, it's interesting. You wouldn't really bother with trying to fix the sentence because, as I said, the scene it is framing doesn't even work. But just to show you about uh, efficient sentence uh, construction, okay, a rustle of busyness has erupted within the Morena Sea. Oh, well, gosh, alrighty. Here's a sentence. Here's a way to convey the exact same information, so much better. The Moraine estate was in turmoil. Now, turmoil does generally convey something a bit more uh, uh, horrible or in turmoil, but also turmoil can be used for just something chaotic. This is a far more punchy, direct sentence. The Moraine estate was in turmoil because it already proposes something interesting. Why are things in turmoil? What's going on? Something chaotic? I'm interested. Already, it piques your interest more. Now look at how much more efficient this sentence is as opposed to the earlier one. A rustle of business is... Oh, it's horrible, sorry. That sentence is so bad, right? A rustle of business has erupted within the Moraine estate. <laughs> All right. That entire sentence was conveyed in what? This is now six words. It's, it's half the length and conveys not only uh, uh, just as much information. Okay, maybe not like, like it doesn't establish that it's the morning, but that's uh, that's not essential. That's not a rel like perfectly relevant information just yet. You want to get the most important information conveyed, the stuff that will trigger the reader's interest. So the next thing that this scene wants to try and convey is that the servants are running their butts off trying to get things ready. 
okay? So that's the next bit of information we want to convey to uh, translate how chaotic things are right now and hopefully maybe trigger their readers' interests again. Like the servants run off their feet. Why are the servants so busy? Now remember, because I want to kind of improve this, I'd probably write it from the perspective of the main character. Because this is also important. You need to establish who the main character is and who the viewpoint character is right away. Okay. Uh, now this is different if you're writing in third person omniscient, but third person omniscient is not done often these days. Only do omniscient knowingly for a good reason. If you have no reason to uh, write uh, in omniscient over limited, just do limited, okay? Limited is the standard in fantasy at the moment, like first person is the standard in, standard in YA. Stick with the standards unless you have a very good reason not to. I mean, a good example. There's a book I want to write which has a very large cast of characters, specifically a large cast of characters with a lot of people talking in the one scene, or several scenes over. The entire story is structured like It's actually a story based on a roleplay game I had called Rogue Star. I need to write that story in Omniscient. It's the only way to convey all the thoughts through the character's head and stuff like that um, uh, properly. Now, interesting, you can do large cast of characters with limited, but if you want to get the characters, sorry, more than one character's thoughts known to the reader at one, in one spin, scene specifically, that's where omniscient comes in. But if you're not doing that, if you have a more primary, you know, protagonist who most of the things are from his perspective, third person limited, do it. And so with this, because I have a primary protagonist and things should be from his perspective, this should be written in third person limited from Senton's perspective. So, introducing the character. Now remember, this is what I, even the corrections here I'm writing now is raw because whenever you write something flat out, you will always improve it. So this stuff isn't even going to be perfect either, but it's hopefully going to be not hopefully, it's going to be a major improvement for what was written before because the stuff before was so crap. So uh, something like Sen uh, Senton all but had uh, uh, to, all but had to uh, dodge. See, this is where you want to start thinking of good words, okay? Because whenever you come to a descriptive word, you want to use the right word. You don't need to use big words. Big words, look, okay, only use the big word if it's the right word. So dodge isn't really going to work here because uh, the uh, the phrasing, sent on all but had to, meaning he had to do so much except this one thing. And so if I write all but had to dodge, that's describing he didn't have to dodge, but he was doing things lesser than dodging, but dodging is the evident thing he will, I want him to be doing. So something that conveys something more frantic than dodging, how about dance? All but had to dance to get through the servants. Now, still not sure I like it. Sent on all but had to dance. Ah, all but had to dance his way through the countless servants. Now, see, this is where another we need to be careful avoiding this because I need to establish his preparing for Senton's departure, but also his father. Now, is it relevant? Do I need to say his father? It might be important. So actually, I'm not going to mention that it is Senton or his father's departure because that's going to be evident through the natural flow of the scene. When you see Senton getting on his horse and his father on his horse, you know they're the ones going to be leaving. So uh, instead, uh, let's talk about the departure itself. So preparing for the great departure, uh, something like that. So uh, now, do we want to add uh, an additional descriptive word to kind of add a scene? Um, uh, the countless servants frantically. Okay. The Moraine estate was in turmoil. Sent on all but had to dance his way through the countless servants frantically preparing for the great departure. Now this is where we get to something really important, okay? This is uh, how to work a third person limited narrative. If Senton is the viewpoint character, and writing in third person, this is where the narration should be, or to get the best out of it, it should be in the voice of the character. The character isn't speaking, but the narrator is going to describe things the way the character would describe it. And so, because this is a description of something, the departure, how does Senton look at this departure? Now, remembering uh, about this thing, uh, the story, uh, like Senton didn't fully know why it was going. So he would probably think of it as a ridiculous mission, but he has a bit more respect for his father than uh, outright, but he might call it in his head. So what would be the best one? So maybe something like this, preparing for this massive 
exercise in futility. And this is where we get to uh, a writing that is better, okay? Um, because now we are starting to uh, speak from the character's voice. Now, of course, if we we're doing proper formatting, it would be indented there with a double space line, but we'll keep it. So now, now we're going into the voice of the character. This is where your writing becomes just writing to good writing, in my opinion, okay? Now, just another thing right here. When I'm writing, I just want to get the words on the paper. So if I even see that I've made a typo, just ignore it, okay? I'll, I'll work on fixing those typos after I get the sentence from my head onto the paper. So again, now right now, I wanna do a descriptive word, like, you know, all the way across the Blasted Kingdom or something like that, right? But now I need to start thinking about setting. What are the expletives and descriptive words that the characters use in this type of setting? So in my, in my most current book, right, which uses different things, <laughs> and this is why I was so, I, because I've, you know, it's like 130,000 words, my most recent book, in a very different setting, uh, their descriptive use words and stuff like that, the vernacular and things, is very uh, keyed in onto my reflex. And I was about to write all across the light cursed kingdom, uh, because they use light uh, as their expressions quite a lot. And I was about to do that, so now I gotta pause. But to save time from getting immersed into the setting, we can write damned. Honestly, why had Sinton's father accepted this mission? To travel all the way across the damned kingdom, all for a barracks, uh, barracks uh, inspection. This is me remembering uh, the plot of this early book. So I remember you know, what was going on. And this is, this is so much better on how to kick off a story because it is already proposing something odd, something interesting, an event, and hopefully hook the reader in to want to learn more. So, the Moraine estate was in turmoil, sent on all but had to dance his way through the countless servants, frantically preparing for his, this massive exercise in futility. Honestly, why had Senton's father accepted this mission to travel all the way across the damned kingdom, all for a barracks inspection that could have been done by any captain in the realm? So, does that work? One is a lot better than what it was. It's not perfect though. There are a couple of things that I think we might be able to tweak. Now, we could spend ages, but we'll just see what we can do. Send on all but had to dance his way through the countless servants. The comma here, uh, frantically preparing for the massive exercise of utility, seems to, uh, the, the, the issue is, is who is the word frantically referring to now? With the comma there, it seems that frantically is now referring back to Senton as the viewpoint character. So Senton all but had to dance his way through the countless servants, comma, frantically prepare. So now it's so like, because if I was to write it like Senton, or for because so, 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 so the comma is basically making a distinction that we're not talking about the servants anymore, we're back to Senton, which is not what we want. So perhaps, I'll get rid of frantically entirely because we just don't want to risk confusing the description. So Sendon Allbad had to dance his way through the countless servants preparing... So all we could do... Servants, comma, who, uh, who were preparing... Okay, all countless servants who were preparing for this massive exercise who were frantically preparing... Frantically... Uh, all better dance ways through the countless servants who were frantically preparing for this massive exercise in futility. Honestly, why had Senton's father accepted this mission? To travel all the way across the damned kingdom, all for... Now, now, so, uh, uh, next thing, alright? Uh, two uses of oars. You've got to be uh, careful of repetition of words. To travel all the way across the damned kingdom, all for a barracks inspection that could have been done. Now, it's, it might be possible, but... For me, I'd rather be safe than sorry, so I might try and replace that second all for something else. To travel all the way across the Dan Kingdom, so what I'm going to do, get rid of the comma and keep this all together. So, to travel all the way across the Dan Kingdom for a barracks inspection that could have been done by any other captain in the realm, maybe? Any captain in the realm? Any other? Because when you say any captain in the realm, well, uh, Sinod's father is a captain in the realm, which includes him, which contradicts the sentence itself. So do you see the problem there? Uh, I just find it amazing how even little kind of uh, differences like that can change meanings of sentences. And these are the things you've got to be, you know, aware of. So now we have um, to travel all the way across the damn kingdom for a barracks inspection that could have been done by any other captain in the realm. 
So that could be a bit too wordy. Uh, we could just leave it for a barracks inspection that could have been done by any other captain. Captain in the realm, uh, yeah, I can, it's not necessarily, yeah, uh, you know, essential that that bit of information there, that the, the world is called the realm. Any other captain. This paragraph is orders of magnitude better than what we started with. One of the biggest differences, one, and this is what, re with my opinion, makes great writing, okay, is when the character leaps off the page and and every and it's the character speak and so it's funny this is the narrator speaking but it's from the character's perspective in the way the character would say it because the honestly why had Senton's father accepted this mission to travel all the way across the damn kingdom the narrator i mean uh, is uh, doesn't even exist yeah, especially when you're talking about in third person omniscient sometimes you can make the narrator be a character so that that's up to you uh first person the narrator is of course the viewpoint character that's first person but third person uh the narrator should technically be speaking as if the character speaks describing the way the things the character describes things because that makes the character just leap off the page so this is the way that Senton would be describing the situation. He thinks that, uh, you know, he would say all the way across the damned kingdom for a barracks inspection that could have been done by any other captain. And this uh, paragraph also indicates Senton's opinion about this uh, big mission they're about to leave on. He thinks it's stupid, useless, pointless, which hopefully creates a bit of conflict and interest that draws people in. Why does Senton think? This is uh, ridiculous now, okay? Uh, so it's kind of answered, could have been done by any other captain. A new question though, why is his father doing this? So again, these questions that establishes a situation already in the very first paragraph, and that is the kind of thing you want. And uh, look, we could just keep going and it'll take too long, but we, we really should end it there. But my goodness, like, uh, look, the words are there for you to read, uh, and yeah, it's absolute trash, but this is where, you know, not everyone, but everyone begins at uh, a pretty horrible state when you start to write. And this is where I began, which is pretty damned horrible. Not even understanding perspective, right? Basically writing it as a huge exposition from a narrator in present tense. There's no voice of the character, way too much rambling and info, uh, just not, there are some info dumps, but, uh, just explaining everything, you know, telling, not showing, horrible, horrible. Like this type of writing, we're talking about not the stuff we just wrote now, talking about the stuff we started with, the, the, my, you know, how I used to write, it would never get published, okay? Well, this, this is the other thing, right? I, if I ever did, I like self-publishes, because there's nothing stopping you from self-publishing. If I self-published something like that, I would be so embarrassed about it. It's horrendous. And so I hope that you would never fall into this mistake either, because unfortunately you do see some self-published works. And when I say some, you, you do see a lot of self-published works that uh, the writing is not up to scratch. And, uh, and I hope that you'll never do that. I, I, like, but it's very difficult because you've got to figure out where your writing's at and, you know, how to improve. Now, if you've watched my previous video on how to write a book, uh, I mentioned in that video that there's two big halves to writing, story and then the sentence level stuff. What we've only been focusing on really here is the sentence level stuff, but this is the stuff that I find people have the most trouble with. And look at how much time we just spent on, on, on the sentences. What's interesting though, there was a part of what we did that was very important to the story, and that was in regards to the pacing and plot. Specifically, it was establishing part of the plot of the story in the very first paragraph. Now, as to what that plot is, there's no way to convey that in the first page, because the plot is everything that comprises the story, really. So the events, the uh, conflicts, the climax, the resolution, oh, those, are, those are the story. And like I said, you won't ever get that on the first page. Uh, but this is the stuff that will make it or break it for nearly all writers who are trying to get published. Well, actually, look, I'll, I'll rephrase that. When I say make it or break it, I mean this is the stuff that you have to get right if you want the uh, agents or whatever or anyone to even look at the story. Okay, if they can't get past the sentences, the first paragraphs, the first page, how can they ever find out how awesome your story is? So that's why it's so important to get the sentence level stuff. And this is also why the bar is so much higher for the prose versus the story. Because stories, it's funny, as I mentioned in the other video, they don't need to be perfect. If you have a kick butt character and it's still just enjoyable enough, maybe a great setting, if you hit one of those things right, you can still have a very successful book 
But if you don't pass the pros test, which is what we've been looking at here, you have no hope. So thank you for watching, guys. This was an example of how uh, I will review and critique your works that you have sent to me. So we will get to them. We've talked about a lot of the finer points of writing just in here, but these are only the things that stood out to me in what was wrong with the original, you know, writing. So we'll very most likely find different things as we look at other things, but I hope it has been helpful and I hope to see you again. Until that time, farewell.